All right, should be recording now. Okay, great. Thank you for that. <clears throat> All right, so with the alternative format, there are a wide variety of options that are available. Again, to allow that flexibility for how you want to consume the content. So if you ever try to read a PDF on a phone, it's painful. Well, you can convert it to a mobile friendly HTML that's going to be responsive and adapt automatically to the screen size. OCR PDFs for those scanned PDFs that are notoriously really bad, horrible when it comes to accessibility. EPUB for students that are using an iPad, a, a Kindle, Fire Tablet, whatever the case may be. Audio, not only great for individuals that maybe have a visual impairment, but if you have students that are commuting or just lead a really busy lifestyle, like we all kind of do today, well, then they can take that and they can convert it to audio and then listen to it. So maybe they're driving and instead of when they can't read, but then they can listen to it and consume that content. Electronic Braille for anybody on your campus that may be using a electronic Braille or a refreshable Braille display. The latest alternative format is the Immersive Reader, which is a partnership with Microsoft. So we're utilizing their technology, which is just really fantastic and a lot of the things that it can do. Uh, the translated versions, which we talked about. So uh, right now, for translated versions specific, we use AWS's translation service, which <clears throat> supports about 50 different languages. I did take a look take a look at the list that you sent over, and three of the six, actually the first three on your list, are supported in the immersive reader. So that really just leaves three languages that wouldn't be supported for uh, that's currently in use on your campus. So um, that you know, and and they're adding new languages every day. So uh, I should, I'm sorry, not every day, but they do add uh, new languages uh, through the system. So as that gets updated, we'll, um, you know, that'll be available at, through the release notes and things like that. All right, so, so the next uh, feature of Ally is the instructor feedback. And this is where the tool is going to provide information to the instructors about the overall accessibility of their content. And then it's going to take it and not only let them know what is or isn't accessible, it's going to give them information about why that's an, why that is important from an accessibility standpoint. And then it's going to provide information and guidance on how you can fix that and make it more accessible with also examples of what you know, so maybe you're looking at uh, contrast issues and it's going to give you examples for what you should and shouldn't use for contrast. And then this is embedded directly into your course, so you don't have to open it up or go to a third party tool. You just click on the indicator and then it's going to pop right up there in the browser for you. And then the third piece is the institutional reporting. So this is where you'll be able to see at a high level overview how your institution is doing from accessibility and where you're at in that accessibility journey. And then it also tracks it over time. So you'll be able to see, are we making improvements? Maybe we have a new term that starts and it dipped a little bit, so we need to look into that. So it's gonna track that over time and it really helps you to identify and focus where those problem areas are and where your remediation efforts are going to be best spent. Another great thing with the, with the reporting is that with most institutions, we see that a new, term is going to be spun up and all their courses are going to be created sometimes a couple weeks before they get into the hands of the student. So then you can take a look at this report and see where some of your problems may be and start to work and remediate that long before it ever gets in the hands of the student. And that really shifts that mindset and that focus of being reactive and putting out fires to being proactive and making sure your courses are more accessible uh, before they ever even get turned over to the students. So a lot of benefits from the institutional reporting side of it as well. So the next thing we're going to do is jump into a demo, but before we do that, I'll pause for a moment and ask if there's any questions. Okay, so uh, this is a our, one of our demo courses inside of Canvas, and as you can see here, we have uh, a very basic sample course that we have set up. So, you know, some uh, pages, files, areas, so on and so forth. And 
The first thing I want to point out are the alternative formats. <clears throat> so if we go down and look at our material to access the alternative formats, we're just going to click on this drop down arrow and then we're going to access alternative formats. So um, we have a Word document here that we created and it's got some issues in it. But so, do, um, Eddie, can I ask, is this the faculty view or is this a student view? So, so this is a faculty view, and the way that you can tell is you're going to see these these uh, score indicators here. If we were in the student view, you're not going to see that. So if I jump into the student view real quick and go back down to that same piece of content, now all we get are just the alternative formats. But we don't get that score indicator. Which, which brings up a great point is that none of the scoring, none of the information related to the overall accessibility of the content is ever going to be visible to students. That's only going to be for your faculty and administrators. But very good question, thank you. So let me jump back out of the student view. <clears throat> so to access the alternative formats, you just click on this drop down arrow, click on alternative formats, and now you're going to get all of those alternative formats that are going to be available to you depending on the type of content it is and ally has intelligence and logic built into it so it knows the format of the original and it knows what alternative formats should be available based on that so for instance the original is a word document and we don't see we you know the first option here we have tag pdf html etc but if i jump and grab a pdf that was a scan, you see my first option here is OCR PDF. So Ally knows that, that particular piece, this particular piece of content was a scan PDF and it makes that OCR PDF available to you. So if we go back to this one and <clears throat> what I want to do first is just kind of show you the original document. So if before you, on, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, Eddie, before you go there, could you explain the difference between an OCR PDF and a regular PDF? Yes, so a scanned PDF is for, for, for a, a technical answer, it is nothing but an image with no content, no information. So if it's somebody that has no sort of visual impairment, you can go and you can read that. But if you're relying on any sort of, if, you, if you're relying on any sort of assistive technology like a screen reader, or anything like that, it's a scan PDF is going to be completely inaccessible to you. So what OCR does is it use so it uses the the Abbey Fine Reader product behind the scenes and it takes that and then it converts it into a a standard PDF that now you'll be able to uh, copy and paste text. You'll be able to search the document. Screen readers will be able to actually read that text and interpret it back to the the student. So there's a Scan PDFs are bad for many, many reasons, but for accessibility, they're really one of the worst offenders. So what that OCR does, it makes it more accessible to your students that are requiring some sort of assistive technology. One other thing with that is that it's not just for students with disability. So if you're maybe you're writing a paper and you're trying to you know, cite your sources or, or you know, add a, a quote or copy and paste, well, you can't do that from a scanned PDF. So there's a lot of benefits to that outside of just the um, thinking of it as just for uh, individuals with disability. So does that, thank that you. answer the question there? Yep, thank you, Eddie. Yep, you're very welcome. So not sure why this isn't loading, probably something with, oh, there we go. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see here that this is just our, uh, it's just a document that our, that was created for us and we have some different sizes of font some different color uh, these light grays we have um, some tables in here things like that and just for somebody that is using looking at this uh, with normal vision probably not a problem however maybe you have a slight visual impairment well these light grays can be very difficult to read or maybe you're in a classroom setting and it's being projected and it's the projector isn't very good or the lighting's bright, that can sometimes get completely washed out and be very problematic. So what Ally is going to do is 
allow you to take and convert that. So let's go and convert this to an HTML. So the first thing you do, just pick the version you want and then click on download. Now, one thing to note is that this is going to save directly to the local device, whether it's a computer, smartphone, tablet of the student or instructor. So this never goes back into your LMS. So it all stays local. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and you can see here that a couple things it does. First is that it standardizes the font size and color. So that's going to give you a more, excuse me, a more, um, more accessible document just based on that. And then it also adds some additional information. So it's going to, if we take a moment and inspect this and take a look at it, we're going to see here that it's going to add some tags and some information. So as we're going through this, now we're getting some additional information. So if we're utilizing a screen reader, if we're utilizing some sort of assistive technology, we get that information added to the document for us automatically. The other thing that it does is this is HTML and it is responsive. So let's say I'm looking at this on a phone. Well, now you can see here that it, it resizes it automatically. So now I can just scroll up and down to read this document without having to pinch and zoom and scroll left and right. Or maybe I'm using it on a tablet. So the screen's a little bit bigger, but you can see that it adapts to the screen size of the device that you're using. So again, it gives you a better experience as you're trying to consume the content. And that's just one example of the alternative format. So if we go back to our document here, we can see that we have, again, the EPUB, if you're using uh, ebook software, the electronic Braille, if, if this is going to create a .brf file for uh, those students that are using those devices. Audio, this is going to take that document and convert it into an audio format. Now, Again, very beneficial for individuals that have a visual impairment, but also studies have shown that when you, in, when you engage multiple senses, so maybe you're trying to read this, but you can also listen to it at the same time, students are more apt to consume the content and remember it when they're engaging and they're reading it as they're listening to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this just, uh, just a, a snippet of this so you'll be able to hear what it sounds like. Begin paragraph text, Vincent Van Gogh. Summary of Van Gogh's life. Vincent Van Gogh, March 30th, 1853, July 29th, 1890, was a Dutch post-impressionist painter who is among... So, hopefully you're able to hear that, but it's, it's a very... Um... It's not robotic, it's more of a natural tone, and it's going to allow you to listen to that... <clears throat> that information versus trying to read it. If we go back over to the alternative format, so the Beeline Reader, this uh, used to be the latest one, but we had the Immersive Reader. So, um, so the Beeline Reader is kind of a really cool format. It's, it uses responsive uh, mobile-friendly HTML, but what it also does is it adds these color variants to the text and studies have found that this is helpful for individuals with ADHD and other types of disabilities where it's hard for them to concentrate and focus. This was originally developed for by lawyers as a way to speed read through a lot of content, but they found that it had a, other benefits outside of that. You do have some options for the color scheme. So you can do the bright, which are reds and blues. You can do darks different shades of blues, different shades of grays, or you can do night, which is the blue uh, color theme, but it's on a, a black background. This is my personal preference. I'm kind of a night owl, so I like to do a lot of reading at night, and this is more, for me, this is easier on the eyes. And as with the regular HTML, this is also responsive and mobile friendly, so as the screen size is adjust, it's going to adjust with that as well. <clears throat> so a lot of benefits to that. If you are familiar with the Beeline Reader, this doesn't require their plugin. So this is automatic, this is all just HTML. So it's going to load directly in your browser without any sort of additional plugin that would be required. I'm going to jump over the Immersive Reader just for a moment. So again, translated versions, uh, we, as we talked about, there are about 50 in this list. And you can go through and pick 
whichever one you like. So let's just go and grab uh, Portuguese here. We're going to download this. And I will say that sometimes you'll get a loading screen uh, depend because we do use third party technologies to do this. And depending on the type of translation, sometimes this can take a little bit longer than others. But um, let's go ahead and cancel this. Now, if you cancel and the good thing is Ally is going to continue to do the translation in the background. So maybe it's going to take a minute or two. I get impatient. I cancel. I go back. It's going to go ahead and process that. So next time I go back, it'll download instantaneous. Um, great question about the accuracy. So again, this does use AWS's translation service, which is it is an AI uh, type of service. However, we do have language experts that periodically review the translations and <clears throat> and um, have confirmed that they are they they don't put an exact number on it, but they are um, very accurate. Uh, the question about turning them off. So yes, you can. There is a feature flag inside of the Ally config. However, that is a course wide that is a system wide on or off. So if you were to turn off translated versions, it would turn it off for the entire system. It is on the Ally product team's roadmap to make that a course by course setting. I know we have a lot of institutions that are concerned when it comes to foreign language courses and things of that nature, so they are aware of it and they're working on the best way to implement that. However, what you can do is if you have translated versions turned on at the system level, but maybe you have an instructor that doesn't want it for a certain file, instructors do have the option to come in here and actually disable all alternative formats for a particular file. So not a 100% way to do it, but it is a way to, if if you have an instructor that may be adamant about not having um, <clears throat> alternative formats because maybe it's a test um, or things like that. So as far as the accuracy, I can get you uh, better information from the product team. So uh, I don't want to I don't want to misspeak, but let me reach out to them and I'll get you some more information on that. Is that okay? That's perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. So one other thing I will add to is that if you were to disable the the translated version feature flag, that also applies to the immersive reader. So it would disable that sub feature of translations inside of the immersive reader as well. So uh, depending on <clears throat> how you want to to go about that, but that is something that would be an option for you. So I will get you the information on that um, for the translations and uh, so I can get you a, a more accurate answer. So the last of the alternative formats is the immersive reader. And again, this is the newest one just launched a um, month or so ago. Tons and tons of features in here have been really well received. So the, the first thing you'll notice is it loads directly in the browser. And then it will read this out loud. Vincent Van Gogh. Summary of Van Gogh's life. Vincent Van Gogh. Mar so it kind of combines a couple different features. It's going to combine the um, the the translation version, the translated version. If you use that, uh, the all the audio. So get um, kind of the, the best of a lot of different things there. And then you also have some preferences on the text size. So maybe you want it a little bit smaller. Maybe you want it larger, uh, depending on what's the what your personal preference is. You have an option to increase or decrease the spacing of the words. You can select different fonts, your color scheme for whatever is um, whatever your preference is. And then if we jump over here for grammar, and this is where it's really cool is that you can now, you can show if you want to show this, the different syllables, if you wanted to point out nouns, um, verbs, adjectives, or adverbs, and then you can also show labels. So it'll show you the, what parts of speech those particular words are. And then for the reading preferences, so you can decide if you want it, if you want to do a line focus. So let's say maybe we want to look at one line or three lines or five lines. We have the option to do that uh, whenever it's reading it. So as it's reading through, you can decide if you want it to show one line at a time, three or five. It also has this picture dictionary built in, which is pretty cool because you can come over here and um, you know, 
Let's see. Uh, there we go. So if you click on a word and they have pictures associated with it, you can see some, They and this is all done by Microsoft, but they've added pictures to help show what that word is, especially if it's somebody that's maybe not um, not fluent in the language or not quite sure what a particular word means. So uh, that's it, an option as well. Again, uh, you can decide to turn, you know, those can be turned on or off. And then we have the, the language translation. So <clears throat> You can come in here and pick uh, whatever language, and then you can decide do you want it to be translated by word or do you want the entire document translated? So, and then you get the top here, so you can go back to the original or you can stick with the language. Also, if you translate it, Vincent Van Gogh, un resum de la vida de Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh. Entre 30 de març de 1853 i 29 de juliol de 1890. So, hopefully you're able to hear that, but if you do the translation, then you also get, it will, um, and read it out loud, you'll get the, the, the spoken piece will be in the language that you translated it to as well. What's really beneficial to this is that if you have, say, an ESL student, and they're maybe struggling with a particular word or a phrase, they can translate it and then they can go back and forth. So maybe, you know, we'll just say that, I don't know, not really finding a good one here, but uh, maybe paintings is something that they weren't quite sure of. So they can translate it and then they can come in here and say, okay, well, that's what that word is in my language. So now I get a better understanding of it in, um, in English as well. So again, a lot of functionality that is available there as well. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of going through the chat, make sure I hadn't missed anything. So for the alternative formats that covers all of those, are there any questions before we move on to the in the instructor piece of it? If anything comes up, uh, just uh, throw it in a chat or jump on mic and we'll get that, get those answered for you. So as I mentioned, there are three components. We've looked at the all alternative format. So let's take a look at the instructor feedback portion. So the first thing you'll notice is that there are these gauges beside each piece of content or if it's an image, and that's going to give you the overall accessibility score for that. So let's take a look at this you know, same Vincent Bingo document. And if we click on the gauge, the first thing you're going to notice is that <clears throat> it loads the document right here in the browser for me. So I don't have to go and bounce back and forth and I can see what's going on. Now, the first thing it's going to do is going to default to the issue that is, we'll say the, the easiest to fix, right? Like, so uh, this one is that images are missing a description. So we can see that um, if we look at the top here, we have five images in this document that don't have a description. And then we can use these navigation arrows to go from image to image inside of the document. We also have this eyeball here, <coughs> excuse me, that is going to show it's going to highlight it, but maybe that's that highlighting is distracting or it's blocking something that you need to see. You have the option to turn that on or off. And if we jump over to the right, you have the the name of the document, the overall accessibility score for the entire document, and then the current issue that we're looking at. So right now we're looking at images without a description. So now we get the what does this mean? So this is where Ally is going to be. It, it becomes a, a tool that's going to help teach and educate. So now I know, well, what is, a, what is an image description? Give some examples of that. And now I'll get why is it important to use it? And as we mentioned, there's always that disability aspect of it, which is you know, obviously of utmost importance, but also, well, you know, it's going to help if you're searching, providing better context. So there's a lot of uses outside of just, you know, when you think of um, individuals with disability. So go ahead and close that. Now the next thing is, well, well, how do I add a description? Again, this is where it's going to teach and educate and then hopefully change behavior down the road. So as you begin to remediate this content, when you're creating new content, hopefully that kind of sticks with you and it's back in mind, okay, I, I need to add a description of these images in my document. So you can download the original. So maybe it's a course that this wasn't your original content. You can go download that and work on it. And then just pick the version of Office that you're working on. And it's going to give you step-by-step -step directions on how to 
work through your whatever tool that you're using and add those descriptions. Now, you can also get information about, well, what's a good description? And you can browse through these and it gives you some examples of what's a good, good description, what may be a not so good description, um, making sure it's contextual. So if you're in a history class, what's well, one? If it's in an art class, it's a different. If you're if you have an image with a graph or a chart that's displaying information, making sure all of that information is inside of that description. And then lastly, if it's a decorative image, or maybe it's um, just like a something to break up a page or something that doesn't provide any context, you can flag that as decorative and then now I will just skip over that. And then there's an option to print. So if there's ever um, somebody that wants something physical in front of them, they can follow along with, they can do that as well. And then you have help here at the bottom. So the help is customizable, and that's more of a, an ad administrative setting, but you can, as an instructor, I can go through and see exactly what, um, get help on this particular issue. And, and that will allow me to, again, it's really a self-service tool. So I don't have to worry about, you know, it's, 10 o'clock on the Saturday night and I have a question about this, the help should be able to answer that for them. All right, so if we go back to Ally, now we have this all issues. So if we click on this, we can see there's actually five issues that have been identified in this document. So let's go and take a look at text with insufficient contrast. So when I click on that, first thing you'll notice is that the, the highlighting now switched to um, text in the document with insufficient contrast. <clears throat> And then I can still get these same. Um, so no, so Ally, uh, Ally will not rate the description. The only thing it does is it doesn't allow you to use like the actual name of the file. And, and that's one of the things that it's been brought up a lot and it's, you know, how do you do that? So there's there's been conversations, but nothing where, because it's it's so subjective, right? Like, you know, when we talk about the, you know, well, what type of class is it? You know, like the history versus art class. So that that type of a thing. Um, and that's where, if we go back to that really quick, um, that's where the that information of how to write a good description comes in. It's um, because it is very challenging to do uh, programmatically. So it's um, we understand that there's some things just it's going to require that human interact, human interaction, but that's where uh, this information is very valuable. So hopefully that that answers that question. But if um, if not, I'd be happy to get you more information on that. Okay, you're very welcome. All right, so if we look at uh, insufficient contrast, so again we get uh, the navigation arrows, we can the highlighting. Now if we click on what does this mean? Now we get information about contrast issues. So all of these help pages are going to be contextual based on the issue. And you're going to get a consistent look and feel. So these navigation is going to be consistent across all of the issues, all the problems, giving you information about why it's important. And then if we say, you know, how to fix it. So again, download the original, pick our version of Office, get this step-by-step -step guidance, and then also information on types of contrast issues. So you know, examples of good contrast versus uh, poor contrast. And then if we continue to browse through, uh, there's a link to a great uh, contrast analyzer tool to help you verify if the, the color combinations you're using are in compliance with the standard. Uh, some examples for, you know, individuals with maybe a red-green color blindness and what that would look like to them. And then uh, it also goes into using fonts uh, appropriately, so making sure you're using the right size font as well. And, you know, there's there's other issues. So the uh, document doesn't have headings, uh, not doesn't have a correct language set, a table that's missing headers. So a lot of a lot of problems with this document. Now, as an instructor, what I can do is I can take that document, work through all these issues, and then I can either browse my computer or I can just actually drag and drop. So what I'm going to do, and I'm not sure how Teams is going to share this, so uh, ho hopefully this will work, but um, we're, we're going to try it. So, 
so we have uh, we we have a document where we've kind of fixed all these issues ahead of time. So then what I can do is I can just drag and drop this right in here. And so right now what's happening is it's uploading a document that has all those issues fixed. So now my score went from a 22% to 100%. It took a little bit of work, you know, I was able to, but I'm using the tools that are available to me. And what you'll notice is that it grades this in real time. So I'm gonna get that instant feedback. Did the changes I make have an impact? Do they help, Do they make it better? So this document went from very low to being a, a perfectly accessible document from just you know using the tool and making those changes and just drag and drop. And the nice thing with it is that <clears throat> if we scroll back down here, it puts it right back into the course. So I don't have to go find it and put it back and, and fix my links. It, it fixed all that and it also rescores it right here for me. So that instant real-time feedback from the instructor perspective is, is really, really valuable when it comes to that. So another thing that Ally does is it's going to look at images inside of a course or excuse me, inside of the system. So if you add a, just an image, it's not associated with the document, you're gonna get these score indicators as well. So now this one's already been, been fixed, but let's just go ahead and we're gonna delete. I'm going to delete this or we're going to remove it. <clears throat> and now you see what happened that that goes down to uh, 25% because there's no alternate text associated with it. Again, we get the same information. What does this mean? Why is it important? How to write a good description with steps for that. But what you can do with this is you get this text box and you can just go and add the text right to it. Click on add and then it's going to rescore automatically for you. So again, that real-time feedback, not having to wait and see, oh, is it better, is it worse? Whatever the case may be, it's going to give you that type of information um, readily available to you. One other thing that instructors are gonna have access to is a course, a course accessibility report, which is a little bit different than the institution report. So the course report is going to provide instructors a high level overview of just their course, which is great because now I can go in as an instructor and I can see not only information related to accessibility, but just my course in general. So how many Word documents, how many PDFs, you know, so on and so forth, I can look at all that. Ally does a great job of breaking down the issues. So maybe I've got, you know, 30 minutes, so I wanna go and work on my course and, and do some work when it comes to accessibility. I can come in here and say, Give me a list of what's the easiest to fix in my course. So maybe that's, you know, maybe I've got some issues, images without descriptions. Maybe I've got, um, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. And I can see that, and then I can start to work through that. So if I click on um, this particular one, now I get that same tool that we saw earlier, and I can start to work on this. So, you know, I've got, um, <clears throat> the same information available to me. I can come in here, I can add uh, text directly in this box, and then I can work on that content from there. Or I can just say, you know what, it's decorative, it doesn't really provide any context, and then just go on. But what that does is that really makes it, as I'm working through this, it allows me to, um, <clears throat> to work on whatever I'm, I need to, whether it's a time or if I'm trying to uh, fix some of the lowest scoring content. So maybe I've got some, uh, you know, some zeros in here, which is which is never good. I've got some scanned PDFs. Um, so that's going to help me to make that better. And if I go back, now I can go down and scroll down and I can see a listing of all of the issues in, in this particular course. So a great way for instructors to see all the information for their course. And again, this is only going to be visible to instructors for the courses they're enrolled in. So instructors aren't gonna be able to see each other's work. So again, that's a, a benefit to that is it's not a, uh, it's not where people are gonna be able to see each other's information. One other thing I wanna mention from the instructor view is we talked a little bit about this. Oh, I'm sorry, I went to the wrong one. Uh, so let's say we have this uh, scan PDF Again, it's uh, it, it's very poor quality. It's not a great scan. You've got some page bindings. You've got just a lot of issues, and I can't do anything with it. I can't I can't copy paste. I can't um, I can't highlight. I can't search. It's just if I'm relying on 
a screen reader or some sort of assistive technology, this is just going to be bad. Now, as an instructor, maybe this is the only version of this I have. So, well, obviously you don't want to go and have to you know, re retype it all. So then what I can do as an instructor is I can come in here, go to the alternative formats. Let's grab this OCR PDF. We'll go ahead and download it. And let's just um, save. So now I've downloaded the OCR version of this PDF. And if I go back and let's open up the <clears throat> This, I can see, you know, it's a scan PDF. It's not very good, but I've used the tools available to me. I've grabbed that OCR version. And then as an instructor, I'm going to go ahead and upload that OCR version back into my course and give my students a more accessible piece of content. Now, it's not going to be perfect, right? Because it's, you know, technology never is. But you can see here that it's much, much better. Now there's gonna be issues. So uh, I'm not gonna pretend it's gonna be 100%, but now I can come in here and I can copy and paste. I can, I can search, I can do other things that I couldn't do before. So even though it's not 100%, it's a much better document for my students. And one thing with this is that it, it is dependent on the quality of the original scan. So the better the quality of the scan, the better your OCR output is going to be. I just wanted to point that out because it's a great use of alternative formats for the instructors as well. So that really covers everything from the instructor view. Before I jump over to the admin view and reporting, are there any questions on what we've been over so far? All right, great. So the last thing we'll talk about is from the instructor view, and this is going to be um, the uh, log into this in the wrong account. Um, I may have logged into the wrong account. So um, apologies for that. Let me switch to my admin account. OK, <clears throat> so you're going to have uh, for your administrators in your system, you're going to have access to this ally institutional report. And what this is going to do is, again, is that it's that high level overview. Now, this is a demo instance, so our course is probably they're definitely not set up like you would see uh, traditionally. But what I can do is I can see whether I want to look at it by term, by academic year or by month. I can pick and choose how I want to see this data how granular I want to see it. And then I can just hover over top and I can see that that history we were talking about. So I can see the, you know, how my overall score is, how my files are. You know, I've got this dip right here. So definitely need to look into that and see what's going on. Uh, yes, you can see at the sub account level. And that's something that uh, we our uh, technical team can work with you on making sure you get that set up. Oh, great. Already, uh, already answered. Uh, so WYSIWYG content is anything that is you is created in the system using the text editor. So the text editor is it's it's built with accessibility in mind. So that's always going to be that higher number. Uh, typically, uh, we see somewhere between 95 and 100 percent for the WYSIWYG content. Yep, absolutely. So um, and then the again, the the blue dotted is going to be your files and then the black is going to be your overall content. So um, look at this, whatever your preference is and then <clears throat> If we scroll down from here, uh, we can so let's just jump back up. The next section, we're going to get the total courses. So we'll see right now for this school year, we got 53 courses. We have um, 12,483 content items. And then we have our overall accessibility score. These percentages below are going to be in comparison to the previous point in time. So since we're looking at this a year, this is going to be we have 20% more courses compared to the 2020-2021 school year. And that, again, allows you to see that, you know, how, how things are going, not only from accessibility, but just in your system. You have more courses, you have more content, you know, whatever the case may be. And then if we scroll down, now we get a listing of all of the issues 
all the accessibility issues that have been identified inside of the LMS, regardless if Ally is enabled for a course or not. And that's one thing that's really important with the report is that it's going to scan all of your content, even if you don't have Ally turned on for a specific course. So that's going to you know, allow you to really focus and see what's going on before turning it over. Um, yeah, uh, yeah and, and those guys are great. They'll definitely get you get be able to get that set up and uh, and, and get that working for you. So this is going to be all issues and it's going to start. It's going to be sorted based on. How many issues have been identified? So, for instance, when it says document, that's going to combine your PDF, Word and PowerPoint presentation. So it just kind of makes the report slightly less you know, unruly because you're, you're not going to have multiple items for each one. Now, this is a lot of data. So what you can do is you can start to drill down into it and get more granular. OK, so typically what we see is institutions want to start with those severe. Give me my worst offenders. Let me work on that. Scam, but not OCR PDFs, number one, everywhere you go. Um, and then you can drill down. You start with your major and minor contrast issues, images without descriptions. And then when you get to minor, you're getting to language sets, missing titles. Things are still problematic, but not as severe. So then what I can do is I can throw it out into this and now I can see all for this particular year. I've got 3400 items with contrast issues. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to get is a listing of courses and then based on. Oh, thank you so much, John. Um, based on how many items in that particular course. So we can see we have this intro to chemistry. It's got 296 issues. And if we click on that, then we can start to drill down and get even more information about this. So we have some PDFs, we have some uh, PowerPoint and. <clears throat> so we can scroll down this list and look at it and if we click on the gauge and then we're going to get that same instructor feedback tool that we saw previously. So we have PDF with insufficient contrast. Um, so we're going to get that same look and feel no matter where we are accessing this from. One thing I will add is this is a feature that you can choose to turn on or off. So if you don't want your administrators to be able to remediate content right from here, you can disable this, turn it off, and then this will not be an option to you. Um, so if there's any question, you're happy to help with that side of it as well. But again, this is going to give you that. Um, so. Uh, Joanne, that's a great question. So if we go back to the institution report, we have this usage report. And so what you can do is you can pick a date and time to run this for. Now for, I just want to run it for July to August. Now with this report, because of there are, there are a lot of privacy concerns that go into it, so you won't be able to get like specific information about um the who but what you will get is you'll get information about um let me just uh switch my sharing really quick and i will share this with you so you'll be able to see the um okay so again this is our demo environment so probably not uh real world data but so what you get here is you're going to get the the, for the time period, you'll see the total number of times the alternative format window was launched, how many downloads, conversion rate, how many unique user downloads. So out of our 41 downloads, we had five users that did that. So again, we can't give you, we don't, we don't track specific information. We use randomized GUIDs so that we don't even know who the students are, but then we do get the breakdown of what types of content are being used. So maybe if you see a lot of Braille, that might be an indication that maybe you have some um, some you know, visually impaired students in your courses that are using Braille readers. And then we can get the total number of courses with downloads. So again, it's not going to give you that specific information because with too much specific information, you can start to kind of you know connect the dots. So it's going to be this is the course and these are the number of downloads for that. And then we also do it for instructor feedback as well. So any course that uses the in where they use the instructor feedback window, so you'll be able to see which. Which courses those were launched in, how many total fixes. One thing I will mention is that a fix is 
just where you make them better. Not that you made it perfect, but for instance, with the scan PDF, we went from zero to 42. That counts as a fix because we we did it. We made it better than it was. And this one, we do get the the courses, so you can go back and look at you know which instructors or whatever the case may be. So does that answer your question as far as the um, the report? Awesome. Yep. And so you can run this at any time, uh, any time frame that you want to look at. Uh, one thing I will say is that, and I know we're getting close on time, so I do want to be respectful of everybody's time. Is that I did run those couple sample files through Ally to do the conversion. Uh, be happy to provide those to you. Um, <clears throat> they are. They're not 100 percent perfect, but they, they do a pretty good job. So I can provide this to you if you'd be interested in, in kind of reviewing those at your own time. Again, I don't want to take up too much time because I know we can really get in the weeds with that, but I will uh, I will provide this so you can kind of see how that works. Um, yep, so let me jump back to the report just really quick here. And So again, you can run that at any time for your institution and kind of see how things are going, how the data is being used. Uh, great tool. Um, thank you so much, Crystal. Appreciate the time. Um, but it's great for you know somebody you know when you get into the you know a dean, a provost, somebody like that that wants to know, hey, is this being used? You can go back and provide that to them at any time. Uh, you can look at it at your courses. So we have the overview, which is everything. You can look at it by courses, and then we have the directory. So if you're using sub accounts, you're using institutional hierarchy, you can actually drill in and get this level of detail for those um, those uh, those sub accounts in that that hierarchy. You can also export this data. So if you have an internal uh, data warehouse business intelligence team that loves like you know the the number nerds, which I used to be one, so I I can say that um, we love raw data, right? So we can take that and we can export that and feed it into another system. Maybe you're doing some internal dashboards. You have access to all that at any time. You can do it at the system level or drill all the way down into a course for that export. And then the last thing we've we've touched on a little bit is the ally configuration. So you're going to have access to you can enable or disable you know one course at a time. Maybe you want to look at a specific term. You have complete control over how you roll this tool out. Uh, we talked a little bit about the help settings. So you have the uh, the, the default help, or you have the um, the custom help, which you can go through and add really whatever you want in here. Uh, put in an email address, and then anytime somebody submits something through that text box that pops up, it will go directly to this email address. And then the last for the configuration are the feature flags. So we talked about uh, these are some of the things that, um, yeah, so uh, definitely. So I just wanted to kind of share, like, you know, there were some questions about the uh, translated version, things like that. So we can, you know, you can disable translated versions at the system level, but Again, super easy to do. It's just a checkbox. So I know we're, you know, we're at 1258 or sorry, 158 for you guys. I'm in central time. Um, are there any questions? Anything that, uh, anything else you'd like to see? All right. Thank you so much, Ashley. Really appreciate it. Um, just to circle back to those translations of the technical content that I provided, mm -hmm. um, what I'd like to do is be able to share that with some speakers of the other languages. So if you could maybe uh, translate those pieces into two or three other languages um, and then send them back, I'll have the students sit down with those. That would be super helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And if you have, if you have specific languages you would like to see, um, if you want to let me know and I can make sure that way we get the you know the best examples for you. No, it's fine. Just any of the ones that you that you have. OK, perfect. Yep, I will. I will get those uh, converted for you and send them over. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Are there any other questions that anybody has? Well, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I love uh, talking and sharing this stuff. I'm really personally passionate about it. So I uh, thank you for that. And I will turn it back over to Andrew.
Wonderful. Thank you, Eddie, so much. Uh, I appreciate the attention here, UVA. Uh, please let us know if there are any questions that you guys have after this meeting. Uh, if not, I'll let you have the rest of your Friday here before a nice weekend. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for your time and attention. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Have Bye, a good buddy. weekend. Thank you.